Hi and welcome to Simultaneous Equations video 3. In this video we're going to look at the substitution method. I'm going to show you a range of examples, some will be simple and some will be semi-complex, to develop an understanding of how to solve a pair of simultaneous equations by substitution. This is our first algebraic method. There will be a couple of more complex examples in video 5 if you want to have a look. So let's have a look at example 1 to help build this understanding. In example 1 we have 2y plus 3x equals 13, I'll call that equation 1, and y equals 2x plus 3, and I'll call that equation 2. It's always good to give your equations names, so that way if you're referencing them, you can call them by their name. Now, I'm going to have a look at equation number 2. So, in number 2 I have y is equal to 2x plus 3. So that means that wherever y is, it is exactly equal to 2x plus 3. Those two expressions are the same and interchangeable. So I'm going to use that feature and that fact. I'm going to sub y equals 2x plus 3 into equation number 1. So let me write that out. Equation number 1 at the moment is 2y plus 3x equals 13 and I'm going to sub into this so that will give me two brackets plus 3x equals 13 and inside that bracket will be 2x plus 3 this thing here because y is equal to that thing so therefore I can take y out and I can put that thing in it was two times y now it's two times 2x plus 3 and now this is an equation, and I can solve that equation because it's just in x. So I'm going to go ahead and solve that equation. Expanding first gives me 4x plus 6 plus 3x equals 13. Subtracting 6 will give me 7x equals 7. And dividing by 7 will give me x is equal to 1. So I've got the first part of my solution, x is equal to 1. Now I'm going to substitute that first part into equation number 2. This is already written as y equals a function of x, so I'm going to use that feature. And in this case, y is now equal to 2 times 1 plus 3, which is equal to 5. So I get the solution over here that x is equal to 1 and y equals equal to 5. And now I'm going to verify that solution, which is the last thing you should do in each case. My verification, notice that I used equation number 2 to get my y value given my x value. So I'm going to verify into equation number 1. And equation number 1 is 2y plus 3x on the left hand side, and that will be equal to 2 times 5 plus 3 times 1 which is 10 plus 3, which is 13. And 13 is what I was hoping it would equal to, because that's what the original equation had. So there it is, a solution to example number 1, using substitution, where my substitution happened in this point right here. And I substituted in 2x plus 3 for my y value, and was able to solve then. Let's have a look at example number 2. Example number two is deliberately a little bit more tricky. So again, I'll give them names, one and two, because I'm pretty original with my names. And I'm going to make some choices now. First of all, I really want to get one of my variables as a subject of the formula. So I'm going to choose equation number one. And I'm going to write this down as x minus 3y equals one. And I'm going to add 3y to both sides giving me x is equal to 1 plus 3y. I've made this choice because in equation 1, the x value was the only one with a coefficient of 1. That is, the only one written as 1x. All the rest of them had numbers in front, which would have provided me with fractions, and I'm really trying to avoid fractions. So now I'm going to sub x equals 1 plus 3y into equation number 2. And that will give me 2y minus 3x equals negative 10. 
2y minus 3 times, I'm going to stick with my colours, 1 plus 3y equals negative 10, and then I'm going to expand and solve. 2y is the same, negative 3 times 1 is negative 3, and negative 3 times 3y is negative 9y, and that's now equal to negative 10. And so of course this gives me, I add 3, and I'll get negative 7, and 2y minus 9y gives me negative 7y, and dividing by negative 7, I get that y is equal to 1. And there's my first unknown variable salt. And I'm going to sub y equals 1 into equation number 1, this version here where I've already got x by itself, to find my x value. So I have x is equal to 1 plus 3y, and so x is equal to 1 plus 3 times 1, and that of course is equal to 4. So I've got x equals 4, and y is equal to 1. Now I use equation number 1 here, so in my verification I'm going to use equation number 2. Verify using equation number 2, so I have this, 2y minus 3x is equal to 2 times 1 minus 3 times 4, which is equal to 2 minus 12, which is equal to negative 10, which is exactly what I want it to be equal. So I verify that this works in the second function as well. Now let's do example 3. Deliberately chosen so that none of the x or y values were easy to use. Coefficient 2, coefficient negative 3, coefficient 2, coefficient 7. So there's no singular x or y values. But we can still do this by substitution. So let's call this equation number 1, and this one equation number 2. And I'm going to pick one at random, probably one of my smaller ones, 2 or 2. I could use any of them, which means there's four different approaches here. And I'm going to choose in number 2, 2y plus 7x equals 58, and subtracting 7x from both sides, 2y is equal to 58 minus 7x, and dividing by 2, y is equal to 58 minus 7x over 2. And I'll be using this as my substitution. And sometimes you might even want to rename this as equation number 3. So you've got a second naming method that you can call on. So let's now put this into, so I'm going to sub y equals 58 minus 7x over 2 into equation number 1. So in equation number 1 I have 2x minus 3y is equal to 38 which means I now have 2x minus 3 bracket equals 38 and inside the bracket I have 58 minus 7x over 2. Now I'm going to simply solve this equation and I say simply obviously it's going to take a bit of work but I want you to realize that we're just using techniques you've learnt before. The first I'm going to expand this bracket and I need to be really careful here. So that negative 3 is multiplied by everything on the inside, but I only need to multiply it by the numerator. So I have 2x here, and then negative 3 times 58 is equal to negative 174. And negative 3 times 7x is equal to positive 21x. So the negative goes with that 3 and sticks with it. Everything is still divided by 2 though. And I'm going to leave this in brackets to make sure I don't make a mistake with that. And this is equal to 38 still. Now I'm going to multiply everything by 2 to remove that fraction. So 2x times 2 is 4x. Plus, and in here we just get everything left as it was. So it's negative 174 plus 21x. And that's equal to 38 times 2, which is 76. And then I'm going to add 174 to both sides. 
and I'll combine my X's, leaving with 25X is equal to 250, which is nice. I'm going to divide by 25, leaving me with X is equal to 10. So that's excellent. Now I'm going to sub X equals 10 into my newly formed function 3. And in 3 I have Y is equal to 58 minus 7X over 2. So that will give me Y equals 58 minus 7 times 10 over 2, which will equal 58 minus 70 over 2, and that will equal negative 6. So my solutions are X is equal to 10, Y is equal to negative 6, and of course I should verify this now into the unused function. I use number 3, and number 3 was just a rearrangement of number 2, you might recall from up here. So I'm now going to use number 1 to verify. So I have 2X minus 3Y equals 38. So 2X minus 3Y, which is equal to 2 times 10, minus 3 times negative 6, that's equal to 20 plus 18, which equals 38, which is exactly what I was hoping, because that's 38 there. And so my solution is verified. And that's the end of video 3. All the best.